Hey Geometry, today we're going to get into 6-2, which is parallelograms. We're going to kind of start our, our focus. We're going to go through the next several sections on various quadrilaterals. We're going to start with parallelograms. Um, so they give us this little example to start with. The uh, arm of a basketball goal, I don't know if you can tell there's a little basketball hoop here, uh, but the arm that goes up to it uh, can be adjusted to a height of 10 feet or 5 feet. Uh, notice that as the height is adjusted, each pair of opposite sides in the quadrilateral formed by the arms remain parallel. So as it's up here, these opposite sides are parallel, as well as these little tiny vertical ones. As it goes down, it remains uh, um, a parallelogram the entire way. These, these sides, opposite sides, are always parallel. So a parallelogram is a quadrilateral uh, with both pairs of opposite sides uh, parallel. That's why it's got that in the name, so parallel. Uh, to name a parallelogram, we use this symbol. We actually use like a little symbol that kind of looks like a parallelogram. So here in parallelogram A, B, C, D, so they're referring to this parallelogram over here. We know how to mark those opposite sides parallel. We can say that, for instance, A, B, segment A, B is parallel to D, C. And we also know that B, C at the top here is parallel to A, D. So that's what we know from that. All right, so we know a bunch of other features about a parallelogram too. So the first thing we can say, if a quadrilateral is a parallelogram, then its opposite sides are congruent. So it's right, its opposite sides are congruent. So we know that like JK, segment JK is congruent to segment ML. And likewise, we could say that JM is congruent to KL. And it's marked over there. Um, and actually, I mean, we could do proof with this. Um, we could do some uh, some different features of, you know, um, like we'll, we'll see later on if you split this into like a um, couple of triangles. We, we could actually prove this, this feature here. Um, if we split this into a couple of triangles, we know that third side would be shared, so it would be the same with a little reflexive property. We could say side, side, side that these two triangles are congruent. And so then we would have like... Um, all right, so why, sorry, uh, I'm getting ahead of myself. So we could split this up with with angles, uh, and uh, we'd have that shared side. We could also show um, angles are the same. So like with the parallel lines cut by a transversal, we know like these angles are supplementary, and then if these are supplementary, it means these are the same, and and so we can kind of we can get there and ultimately go to proving that those sides are congruent through triangles. So um, yeah, we'll leave we'll leave that for another time. Same thing, yeah. So like here, like I said, they, we could prove that those are supplementary, I think we mentioned that down here, and then the opposites are congruent and so on. Um, next feature, if a quadrilateral is a parallelogram, then opposite angles are congruent. Um, so we know that like angle J is congruent to angle L, and angle M is congruent to angle K. And then, like I said, I kind of already mentioned, in a quadrilateral that's a parallelogram, then the consecutive angles are supplementary. So this is where, it's, like I said, if you continue this out, you have parallel lines cut by a transversal. We already know the same side interior are, are, um, are um, supplementary. And then same thing here, we could go here, same side supp supplementary. And then if they're supplementary to the same angle, we know these angles are congruent and we could continue on and show that other opposite angles are congruent uh, like we had up here. Um, and then from there, we can use, uh, you know, like angle side angle and, you know, split things up and um, eventually show that the triangles are congruent in all the sides. We could, we could go through all that. So again, here we have like X plus Y uh, is going to be um, 180 degrees. Or, yeah, we're going to add up to be 180. Um, if a parallelogram has one right angle, then it has uh, four right angles. They're all going to be right angles because if they're supplementary, then this has to be 90 to add up to 180. This has to be 90. And in fact, we've got a new classification. It turns into a rectangle, which we'll, we'll get into in the future. But all four angles end up having to be right angles. Opposite angle has to be a right angle. They're supplementary and so on. All right. So uh, example one in the parallelogram ABCD. So here's our little basketball hoop again. I don't know if you can see our hoop. But um, the measure of angle A is 55. Kind of tiny in here. I'll Write that out there, 55 degrees. The uh, measure of length AB, segment AB is 2.5, and 
and the measure of BC, which is this thing over here, is one, one foot. Um, find each angle. Um, so they, they say that, but then they ask us for these other things. They ask us for these sides. So I'll do these things, and then we can come back and mention the other angles. Um, so DC is a side opposite that 2.5, so it's going to just also be 2.5, right? DC is going to be equal to AB, which is 2.5. The measure of angle B, we know that that's a consecutive angle uh, in a parallelogram, so they're going to be supplementary. So I know that the measure of angle B, uh, so measure of angle B plus the measure of angle A, so plus 55 equals 180 degrees. And so we could subtract 55 from 180 and get 125. So the measure of angle B is 125. And then, so this is 125, and then they ask for the measure of angle C, which we can know that is the same as 55. We could also do 125 minus 180 again, or 180 minus 125 again to get that other side. So that's going to end up being just 55 degrees. It's going to be equal to the measure of angle A, which is 55 degrees. This one over here is 125, wasn't mentioned, and then this side up here is also one foot. So... Um, some of the calculations we can do from that. Continuing on to the back, we've got a few more properties about the diagonals of a parallelogram. So if a quadrilateral is a parallelogram, then its diagonals bisect each other. So these parts here, I can draw a little like congruence, like that little piece there, and then I can put four lines on there. Those pieces are congruent. These are bisectors. The P is the midpoint of those segments as well. It's the definition of bisector. So um, we could say things like AP. Segment AP is congruent to uh, segment PC. And DP is congruent to PB. A couple of ways we could state that. Uh, on the next bit, uh, if a quadrilateral is a parallelogram, then each diagonal separates the parallelogram into two congruent triangles. All right, so if this is a parallelogram, if I know this is parallel to that, and this one here is parallel to that, all right, so we assume we know that this is a parallelogram. Then we know also that opposite sides are congruent. So I'm going to put a couple of, a couple of marks there, a couple of marks. It gets kind of messy here. A couple of marks. Opposite sides are congruent. They have that third shared side. So you could say by side, 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 they're congruent. You could also bring some angles into play. We know this angle is congruent to that angle. So we have side, angle, side. Uh, and you could eventually work your way into you know, some of this other stuff as well. All right, so with the, some of that new knowledge, we've got some diagonals here in a parallelogram. So again, I'm not going to mark it this time, but I know this side's parallel to that side, that side's parallel to that side. So they want us to find each variable. So 5x, first thing I'll look for is, you know, I got the thing right across from it? I do. So I know that 5x is going to be the same as 27. So we can set that up here, 5x equals 27. Oh, bummer, it's not a nice number, so x is... 27 over 5, which works out to be 5.4 if you go for the decimal. Uh, y, I've got Y on this segment here, kind of hard to tell. That's on this segment here, through this diagonal, and on that segment. Well, I know these segments bisect each other, so I know that this part here is going to be congruent to that part. So we can say 2Y minus 5 is equal to Y plus 4. Do some solving, minus Y, minus Y, cancels, plus 5, plus 5, we get y is 9. Uh, we can solve for y that way. Finally, z, I'm looking in here, so uh, I've got 3z down in this angle. I've got this one up here. We could probably do this some other way with a triangle where we'd figure out, like, oh, we know what this angle is, and then figure out the supplementary, and then do the sum of the 180. But what we've got here is we've got just parallel lines cut by a transversal, so don't forget about that these two angles are just going to be congruent to each other. Those are alternate interior angles. So two, 3z is 33. That's going to be the exact same angle. And so divide, z is 11. So we can solve each of those up. Finally, uh, a bit of a weird one. We'll do more with coordinates kind of a little bit later on. But determine the coordinates of the intersection of the diagonals of the parallelogram f, g, h, j with vertices at f at negative 2, 4. So negative 2, 4. Get a point up there. That's f. 
Uh, G is at three, negative five, one, two, three, one, and then it's negative five, or no, it's positive five. One, two, three, four, five. Uh, H at two, negative three. And J at negative three, negative four. So one, two, three, one, two, three, four. All right, so did I screw up or did it screw up? I screwed up. Three, five, I got out of, I went over too far. This point should have been one, two, three over five. I'm say it didn't quite look like a parallelogram. So here's my parallelogram. They actually want, they want to know what is the point, uh, the intersection of the diagonals, the diagonals here. But the feature that we want to use, you might be able to see immediately what it is, but I wouldn't want you to necessarily have to do it that way. Um, the feature that I would want you, uh, and actually this one, is, I didn't draw it super well. It's a little bit up above there. Um, the, this feature up here, then we know that they bisect each other. So this point here is just going to be the midpoint of those two. All right, these two, the midpoint is going to be it. And I could do the midpoint of those two. And in fact, I could do both. All right, so the midpoint formula I could do, so like this was F, that was at negative 2, 4. And then this one was H. All right, I could do the midpoint of FH by doing, uh, so the X coordinates averaged, so negative 2 plus 2 divided by 2, the average of those two, and the average of the Y coordinates, 4 plus negative 3 divided by 2. And so that works out to be 0 over 2, which is just 0, and then 1 over 2, which is 1 half, or 0.5. So 0 comma 1 half. But it's, I didn't draw it super well. but uh, And I could also do that with the other two points, G and um, J. And so I could do the midpoint of G and J, and it should give me the exact same thing. So if I do 3 plus negative 3, over 2, well that's going to be 0, and then if I do 5 plus negative 4 over 2. So I, this is redundant, uh, we don't need to do this, but we can get that same 0 comma 1 half as the midpoint of both of those diagonals, and so that, that point where those two intersect each other.